In the top left, in the bottom right, we have the barcode. It is Naniwa. I'm pretty sure I beat the uh, Naniwa, by the way, on ladder. He played Terran, though. Yeah. Well, I, I think I played Naniwa, too. <laughs> Like, I think every four <laughs> games I play Nanny Wall, just, <laughs> I, I, I can't tell sometimes. Maybe I have you confused. Have you seen the Grandmaster Ladder in Korea? <laughs> it's like Everybody all barcodes. It's barcode. And everyone's a zerg. Uh, Nanny Wall's favorite movie is American Psycho. I don't know why I'm, I think, I don't know why exactly, but I think Nanny Wall says he just likes the premise of it. He likes the acting, and he thinks it's a very funny story. Funny? Do you watch, do you watch it? Not many people say it's funny. I mean, Nanny Wall thinks it's funny. Oh, actually, I don't know. I didn't ask him about it. I remember watching it on TV and Ryder telling me that. So. It's not a comedy. It's not a comedy, <laughs> but it, there's like... It's, it's a thriller, right? Y yeah. It's always a thriller. Especially when he plays PvP, and especially since he's going up against this player in the top left from Team Fanatic Recall, it is Oz. So what do you think is coursing through Nani Wall's mind right now? When you're up against a player like Oz, who was at one point in time known for his PvP, you know Oz is going to view this as, hey, this is, gonna, this is going to really, really showcase my PvP. It's going to say, I still have respect in this matchup. I'm really good in it. What is going through Nani Wall's mind? Uh, this is a proving grounds. Uh, Nani Wall hit another turning point in MLG just a few weekends ago. People are saying, oh my gosh, Nanny was my favorite player. It's like, yeah, yeah, sure. We, we, it wasn't a couple weeks ago. It's the same people that like lit him on fire. It's the mm -hmm. same people that are praising him one week and then the other. Um, but Nanny Wall, this is an opportunity for him to really say, I've truly changed. This is how my play style is really is, is forthcoming. It's, it's becoming, it's progressing to a point where I'm stable. Because before, it would seem like Naniwa got very lucky in some of his GSL rounds. Even he would admit sometimes that he felt like he got a little bit lucky with uh, some of the decisions, some of the builds, even the matchups. But PvP, Naniwa is very solid on. He has a 64% win rate in PvP. And, uh, you know, he, he did lose to Oz earlier this season. But I feel like that was during a time where Naniwa was kind of like, disrupted because he was practicing at Lone Star and he was mm -hmm. playing all the stuff. When Naniwa is focused, I feel like he can compete on any level. I love what we're seeing from Naniwa. He's already s switching up a little bit. He went 14-15 Assimilator. Now, normally you see 15-15 Assimilator, or you're actually going to see 14 Assimilator, 15 Pylon, and then an another Assimilator. So the question begs is, what is he going to do with all this gas? He has uh, three probes on each of them, so he's definitely banking a ton of them. You can see sentries coming out as well. So he definitely can do some sort of tech, whether it be Robo or Stargate or Blink Stalkers. We're not sure yet, but we can already see a Twilight Council going down. What I think Naniwa is going to do is probably Robo or Stargate, but not sure just yet. There it is, Stargate goes down. And it looks like it's going to be a little bit of an advantage for, uh, for Oz. Oh, oh my. Naniwa pulls several probes just to try to deny that probe oh from moving man. out and seeing the Stargate. Now, that has to make Oz super suspicious. Did he catch it? Did he see it? Oh, uh, he did. He did. I but don't I don't think he clicked, he clicked on, on it. it. He's like, is that a Twilight? Is that a... Well, it would either be Twilight or Stargate. You wouldn't make that big of an effort to hide a Robo. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. The Twilight Council is... If you look on the minimap of, uh, of Oz, Twilight Council is not that big. So he knows it's either Gateway or Stargate. That's it. Robo isn't that big either. So you can really relegate really down to those two options. Wow. Probably going to assume it's going to be something like uh, Stargate, and that's why we see this Nexus. I it's like, okay, I know no big pressure is coming up that soon. I can go ahead and throw down this Nexus. Now, he is uh, flipping the coin a little bit here because Naniwa could be doing some sort of four-gate pressure directly after this. Instead, he's going for robotics facility, which is slightly more... Um, not efficient, but uh, safe, conservative. Yeah, uh, you get the Phoenixes out, you expect them to go Stalkers and Blink and try to be really safe, then you get Immortals out, and you can generally be very safe for an expansion because of how much you're able to harass in combination of defend the ramp. Uh, this is a build that we saw Puzzle do a lot in Season 3. I really liked it the first time I saw it. Uh, and I, I think Naniwa, he's, he's shown a couple of times also in his previous matches. Oz, meanwhile, he's going to be on two bases, but Naniwa doesn't have that intel. He doesn't know his opponent's really doing anything. He just popped into the natural and backed out immediately. So, uh, I mean, if Naniwa knew, he would <laughs> he would obviously feel more inclined to put on pressure. But in this scenario, I think Oz has played his cards very well. I think so. He has a very power well. over here. He 
Did he see the? I the think he really did see the Stargate because the way he's gearing everything is like. Oh no, he did. He one hundred percent did. Is seeing the stalkers I mean, in the. You middle. don't you don't put your stalkers <laughs> and sentries inside your mineral line for no reason. You have to know your opponent's going Stargate. He knows his opponent's gone Stargate, and conveniently moves all of his units down. Now Blink is already up. This is like perfect for Oz. And as you can see, Nani is just getting into the base. There is a variation to make more phoenixes from here, but it's smart to actually just go three and then get something like your robotics facility tech. Now Blink is already up, which really gives map control back to Oz. Uh, Oz is going to try to take that map control j by just going out into the middle of the field and really pressuring his opponent, making it very uncomfortable for Naniwa to be out in the map anywhere. And it's going to put pressure on his opponent. He can potentially lose his nexus if Naniwa doesn't go down there because you can easily get force fielded and then your blink stalkers just take and pave the way for victory. Yeah, so yeah. we've been seeing lots of Protoss players really utilize this, uh, this little space between the main and the natural ramp to get a concave from the low ground. Uh, we do see Oz trying to get a probe into there, trying to see if he can get a pylon up, and that's going to sabotage the ramp. And Naniwa needs to defend this, but he's not in position to. One more will get sectioned off, not able within range. Naniwa also misses one force field, does manage to get another with trapping all the sentries, but that also traps a lot of the zealots. And they basically trade sentries for zealots. What's who, who came out better in that situation on? By far, Naniwa. I mean, Naniwa is looking so good from here. Uh, yes, he loses all of his zealots, but oh, oh, the big blink sniping one immortal. The proxy pylon still doing uh, massive amounts of reinforcements. And Oz, he's gonna be able to pick off these sentries. The the, the phoenix has finally come back, but there's really just immortals. Only oh. immortals left. <laughs> Never mind, Frodan. That pylon on the low ground actually flanked with a ton of zealots, and that forced the immortals all the way back. I thought, I was like, why are you not engaging against this? Your immortals do so much damage, but now Naniwa going to lose his nexus. This is so unfortunate for him. This one single pylon helped out Oz so incredibly much, and now you can see Naniwa is just struggling to get down the ramp, do something of value. He can't do anything, though, Frodo. I mean, uh, Oz played this perfectly, really establishing the map control after he shut down the Phoenix Rest so very easily, took the expansion so fast, got the economic advantage. Uh, he basically was able to have his cake and eat it. Yeah, and then he was uh, forced to go back to the drawing board, dropping two more gates. He was on two gates the entire time. Uh, and was not able to really benefit at all from the Nexus. A perfect timing from Oz, just as the Nexus finishes, he's able to punish it. Now there's four mortals. Uh, and Stalkers pretty much get instantly destroyed. So Oz has to be very cautious. Uh, Naniwa still has uh, an unbreakable force if you just force field correctly. Naniwa doesn't really have a way to go down the ramp, though. When you go Immortal Sentry, yes, it's so powerful, but against Sentries and the low ground, you can't really do anything. You're going to be force fielded. Now, there's a couple options. You can do Warp Prism, which is, I see a lot on ladder, but I think it's a lot worse. Uh, the other better way is to go Colossus, but I think Naniwa in this position is saying, I have no time for Colossus. If I go Colossus, I have to wait two whole minutes. That's two whole minutes that my opponent has an expansion that I don't. That's a thousand more minerals, 400 more gas. I can't do that. That's why he's opting to actually move out with this warp prism and just anything he can muster up with those warp gates. Still, it's going to be something so very difficult for him to accomplish. Uh, as you can see, units are already back at home. Colossus is on the way out. And don't forget those those stalkers over here. Definitely, very easily, just blink up on top and do a ton of damage. Well, now, well, now infiltrating uh, this base. Now, he is going to drop the two Immortals, uh, trying to target down the stalkers immediately and trying to save the Immortal as well. Great job. Good micro from Naniwa. Needs to just kind of warp in more units. And all of a sudden, Oz is wow. in danger of losing a lot as well. That's going to prompt Oz to be very aggressive. Oh, he traps the sentries. Gosh. Oh, no, Naniwa. That's his ability to hold off the pressure. Forced to drop one more force field. Now, Naniwa will be able to clean up a lot of things at the natural, but will he even be able to protect the main? I don't think so. That might seem really weird. Naniwa, why are you moving down? But Naniwa was thinking, okay, all the units are probably going home. I don't actually need to uh, keep them there. I can try to get my positioning and then reclaim my natural while I'm doing all this damage. But of course, we have Oz right outside that's waiting for that to happen. Now, it looks like this Colossus coming out here is going to the end of this pressure, but really nicely done! Ooh. Actually flanking out this Colossus, he's going to be able to take it out. Wow, incredible play from Naniwa. I don't know if it's enough, though. 90 supply to 47, Frodan. That is so substantial. He still cannot get down there. Sentry's being warped in yet again. 
but let's be honest, I mean, it's so hard to actually move down that ramp. And yeah. uh, with four sentries out there, that's basically unlimited amounts of units. Uh, yeah, five is the is the magic count, but he does trap some of the units. Oh, uh, gonna force the engagement. One immortal does drop, but all of those is the sentries. Yeah. Has to be kind of cautious about it. Oh, another force field could trap some of the units. But he does let it go. Nanny while still moving around with the Vorp Prism, trying to see whatever he can take. Uh, maybe drop and take this watchtower. Oz is now saturating and double pumping probes. Uh, actually, just kidding. He, he stops making probes. He wants to just focus on unit production. Realizes two Nexus is always better oh than one. Oh, no. And the Warp Prism is going to be sniped, Froden. And that means the two Immortals and the chance of Naniwa actually coming in back into this game. The yeah. Zealots are going to join up, but GG gets called. And Oz will take game number one. Absolutely wow. phenomenal play coming out from him. The build was perfect, Froden. Yeah, well, very, very well done. Uh, great response to Stargate because obviously Phoenixes can't do anything to a Nexus. Maybe lift more probes, but if you go for Blink early on, a, a great series of decisions. Yeah. Us. Now, that was really risky. I'm not going to lie. A lot of situations could actually happen. Uh, obviously, a Robo all-in would actually be super, super powerful, but Naniwa not really known for doing a lot of one-base all-ins. Also, he can actually cancel the Stargate. Theoretically, it's still in the range. Cancel the Stargate and go for gateways. It's a delayed four gateways, but a, a build like that, Oz is going to get punished so hard for going one gate, Twilight, Council, Nexus. I mean, you can't stop a four gate no matter how delayed it is. Still, uh, Given the circumstances, given that he knows his opponent is going Stargate, everything worked out perfectly. Getting the fast Nexus, getting the Twilight Council, being able to blink around, establishing map control when you have the uh, the correct amount of units, and then putting that pressure on was perfect. And because of that, Oz took the very, very nice win. Great assumptions made by Oz and Naniwa almost pulling back uh, to be able to harass enough, but falling a little bit short. That game was brought to you by go to my PC and answer.tv slash PDEC, go to my PC. But before you do that, check out uh, our promo code going on for the finals. If you use LA Byte, that's just the letter L, the letter A, and then Byte, B I T E, uh, you can get $20 off for your NASL Season 4 tickets, which are still on sale. Get them while they're hot. When we come back, our game number two between uh, Naniwa and Oz will continue. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a sec.